Hi, thanks for tuning in to another video on Armor of God. As always, let me start by saying thank you so much to all of you for taking the time to watch our videos, and hopefully you'll always learn something useful for your own spiritual warfare. Anyway, before I get on with the video, don't forget to be part of our July giveaway, where I'll be giving away three free copies of this book about Father Gabriello Morth. All you have to do is comment on this video because I'll be selecting the three from the people who commented on that video. So now buckle up and let's get on with it then. Recently, I made a video covering what Father Vincent Lampert said about Annalise Michelle, whether it was really Nero, Judas possessing her, or it was simply a usual lie made by the devil. And as for this video, there's a few more details that I'd like to share with you about her case, shared by Father Joseph Iannuzzi during his interview with Dr. James of the Divine Will Channel. There are four types, I would say. Two are innocent, two are not. It'll be deliberate or indeliberate. Um, the two innocent those that have been the subject of a curse in the womb of their mother, and there are more than you can imagine. There was a famous film called The Exorcism of Emily Rose that was in the film about 90% accurate. It's a true story of a woman named Annalisa Michel from Germany, Bavaria, I think, Bavaria. And she was afflicted from the time she was in her mother's womb by the curse of her grandmother. We didn't get along very well with the mother. And these symptoms of curse, being cursed, did not manifest themselves until her college years. So they were dormant. Another case is Giovanna from Bergamo, of whom Father Amor, the late exorcist of Rome and my mentor, and exorcisms recounts in his book, whose brother was a Salesian priest. And she was afflicted in the womb of her mother with a curse, which did not also manifest itself until years later. And it was so severe that Father Amroth had to go all the way to Medjugorje to speak with Vitska and say, we can't get rid of this curse. And Vitska talked with the Blessed Mother and the Blessed Mother told Vitska to tell Father Amroth that this curse can only be expelled by many rosaries before the Blessed Sacrament. But in both cases, they were aware that they were cursed and they offer their sufferings up for the salvation of souls. In fact, during one of the exorcisms with Giovanna from Bergamo, Father Ramoth demanded that the demons reveal themselves in the name of Christ and they did. And the demon said she is a victim, a saint and is cursed. And we hate her because through her suffering, she's, she has saved over a thousand priests from going to hell from her sufferings, which lasted about 20 plus years, that she offered up for the salvation of souls. So on the one hand, she's suffering from Satan and God's permitting it because he, he knows that she's offering this up. Similar Padre Pio, similar case. He was not upset, he was not cursed like these people, but God allowed the devil physically to beat him and leave him to the point of a pool of blood one time. And you say, this is crazy. Why would God allow this? But God sees what we don't see the propensity, the capacity, and the willingness of each soul to endure this. Like Louisa, Jesus said to her, are you willing to be tempted by the devils? She said, yes. And he allowed this for three years. Same with Christ. He underwent diabolical um, attacks for three times in the desert, but he resisted them all. Who's cursed in the womb is one, or cursed in another way due to no fault of their own. Another is a saint. Gemma Golgani, St. Padre Pio, Luisa Picaretta, all of whom were attacked by the devil, Don Bosco, due to no fault of their own, but because of their holiness, the devil attacked them. John Vianney. So they were not cursed like the other people who were innocent, but these souls were innocent too, but they were attacked because they were holy. God wanted to stop the work that they were going to do because the devil had an inkling of the damage he would, they would wreak to his kingdom in the future. So God permits Satan to torment them because God knows that they will offer up their sufferings as a participation in the sufferings of Christ to save souls. Therefore, they are redemptive and salvific. The other two types of people are responsible for their poor plight. Number one, those who commit repeated mortal sins like Judas Iscariot, in whom the devil entered on account of that. He was a thief and he was a betrayer. And this was a repeated pattern of his. The mystery is why did the Lord choose him knowing that he would be lost? And the answer is, because God who foresees all things, even who would be lost and saved, leaves us free to make our decision on the 
basis of the graces he gives us that never fail in that vocation he gives us. So he gave Judas the vocation of episcopacy. That means Judas could have been a saint had he conformed to the graces God gave him. Even though God saw he would abuse those graces, God still gave him those graces knowing that he was capable of corresponding perfectly to them. In other words, just because God may foresee in the future that we will be lost on account of the graces squandered, doesn't mean God will not give us the graces. He will still give us those graces. He will still go ahead with his plan and his vocation that he gives us, right? That's why he chose Judas. Now, the other type of person that is responsible for their poor plight is not a person that has done repeated mortal sins, but rather people that I mentioned earlier, frequent occultists, psychics, tarot card readers, things like that. These are people who expose themselves to demonic infiltration. Once you go to these psychics, none of them are authentic, not one, they're all false. They do have true gifts, which makes it confusing. God gives them these gifts, but they abuse them. They use them for profit, and guess what they do? They go into league with evil spirits, demonic entities, who give them knowledge of the future. So when these people say, your grandfather said this, oh, it's true, only my grandfather would know that, guess what? The devil might know that too. And this is where these people now are in contact with demonic entities, and they accompany them back home. And then they go back to the psychic, the fortune teller, the tarot card reader, which are all demonic means of knowing the truth, which isn't really the truth. And they bring this, this uh, residual evil entity back with them. And they need, uh, they need deliverance to be freed from these demons. If any of you have any questions for Father Yanuzi, please feel free to list your questions down in the comments, and I'll forward them to Dr. James for him to ask Father during their next podcast together. For example, some of you seem to have a lot of questions regarding why Father Yanuzi brought up the apparitions at Medjugorje or regarding aliens and the abduction by aliens, anything related to spiritual warfare or exorcism, or even about Father Gabriel Morth, about the doctrine of the divine will, or did St. Padre Pio really say that about Mars? So for any of you who have any questions for Father Yanuzi, please write them down in the comments below and I'll forward those questions to Dr. James. Now in our previous video, Exposing Fake Catholic Celebrity Seers, some of you asked why Father Michael Rodri belongs to this category. I'll share with you a preview of a video from the Divine Will channel explaining why that is. I left the link to the full video down in the description box below if you want to watch it later on. The Father Michel Scandal The internet celebrity prophet, Father Michel Rodrigue, who was once a mainstay of Catholic internet media, has been cast aside. Both his supporters and the Catholic media personalities who networked with him have moved on to more popular prophetic celebrities. Catholic YouTubers, bloggers, and media personalities alike seek to distance themselves from the fallen soothsayer. Many who were once fawning influencers are finally jumping off the bandwagon. Since so many red flags were ignored, scandal has been the result. Those familiar with religious scandals can see a pattern of perpetrators distancing themselves from each other trying to salvage their ministry careers and attempting to maintain their power base. Sadly, it's no surprise that Father Michel lost his popularity and disgraced himself. Well before Pope Benedict's death, Father Michel struggled with the truth, abandoned his priestly responsibilities, and established himself as a celebrity prophet by spreading one doomsday prophecy after another. But how did this happen? How did an unstable priest with a history of fantastic storytelling become the darling of Catholic internet media? Why were the warning signs ignored? Why were church authorities rejected and bloggers and internet influencers trusted by so many hungry truth seekers? It is hard to understate how troubled Father Michel Rodriguez's journey has been. As a young man, Father Michel burned down his family home claiming that he was freeing himself and his family from evil spirits. As a priest, Father Michel fabricated the bishop's approval of his many prophecies. This led to Bishop LeMay of Amos, Quebec to publicly rebuke Father Michel. Bishop LeMay did not mince words. 
saying, I am extremely shocked and I feel betrayed by these remarks since I never approved of them. So going back to what Father Yanuzi's explanation about curses and occult practices earlier, this is what you should know. If a friend or family member are into occult practices, or worse yet, has entered into league with the devil and has engaged in these sort of communities and you're looking for help, Father Yanuzi advised them to present themselves to a priest who is familiar with deliverance ministry, and there should be one in every diocese at least. And if you can reach out to those we see on the internet, contact them, find out their email, and if they can do it, they should refer us to someone who can as close as possible to where we live. According to Father Yanuzi, it's possible to do deliverance from a distance. Even exorcists can do this. Jesus did it, and he gave this authority to the apostles as well, and they pass it on by the laying out of hands to the priests and those priests who are trained and sent out and commissioned to do these exorcisms, whether they're minor or major, have this authority to. So they can also deliver from a distance, but if we have someone close to us that can help us, Father Yanuzi recommends that our first approach is to find a priest locally that can come bless our home, bless us, do a simple prayer of deliverance over us with holy exorcised oil, exorcised holy water. For the next part of this video, I'd like to share with you what Monsignor Stephen Rossetti said of the Benedict Medal. Today is the feast of St. Benedict, and many have called him the, the patron of exorcisms because he was a powerful intercessor. He used to cast out uh, demons and to heal, work miracles through the power of the cross. So you'll often see St. Benedict holding up a crucifix. It's interesting though that the Benedictine cross, if you will, is typically used by exorcists. Why? Because on this crucifix, inside embedded is what we call the Benedictine medal, the, the medal of St. Benedict. Around it is a, a bunch of letters. People didn't know what it meant. And then around 1640s, in the 1640s, a manuscript was found in Bavaria and explained what those letters meant. They're Latin. These letters around the outside are Latin. It's actually an exorcism prayer. This is the only sacramental that I know of that actually has an exorcism prayer uh, alluded to on it. So what does it say, on, at least on part of it? It says V-R-S-N-S-M-V. Vade retro Satanas. Get behind me, Satan. This is what Jesus said to St. Peter when he tempted him. He said, get behind me, Satan. Vade retro Satanas. And we use this in a solemn exorcism. Numquam suade mihi vana sunt mala que libas ipse venena bibas. Be gone, Satan. Never tempt me with your vanities. What you offer me is evil. Drink the poison yourself. So a powerful exorcism prayer. And so this is why we use this crucifix in an exorcism. And this medal, by the way, you can buy these medals uh, and use them yourselves. And, and I encourage you to do so. I use them in my house. Uh, we use these little stickers. We put them on our phones and computers. As a matter of fact, just today, Someone who has, uh, is afflicted with demons said she put this on her phone and she said she can hardly touch the phone with her hand because it, the demons are screaming and they hate it. So it's a powerful sacramental and we encourage you to use it. So we pray together, Vade Reto Satanas, get behind me, Satan, and may St. Benedict intercede for you and protect you today and always. God bless you. Well, that's all for this video. Hopefully you've learned a lot from this video and thank you so much for taking the time to watch our videos and for your continuous support of our works. For those of you who'd like to support our works through donation, I left the link to our PayPal donation down in the description below. And I would like to say thank you so much to all of you who have contributed. I can't thank you enough and we will keep on producing useful videos for your spiritual warfare. Well then, until next time, stay safe, stay health, and God bless you.